It's a full house for this fifth grade class brushing up on the finer points of Danish. Kids here are back for their second semester during a pandemic. Physical distancing isn't a priority. Teacher Jens Rogard's style is hands-on. For proper teaching, we can't do that with a distance. But right now, that we're trying to do things as normal as possible, not scare any kids. How many times a day do you wash your hands? The students at Alholm Public School in Copenhagen are eager to brag about their hygiene. Those staff say they need constant reminders. 12-year-old Seda is happy to be back at school. It's really fun to have your friends again and talk to them and play soccer. And fun, and yes, says her classmate Yepa. They both agree, though, they were nervous at first. I was a little bit scared because I didn't, nobody know what it was. And like, what if, uh, what could happen if you get sick? It was really hard a bit and you cannot stop thinking about it, but it, it is what it is. The rules haven't always been this relaxed here. Headmaster Soren Witt says when they first opened in April, it was strict. Each class was divided into uh, three groups and they all had their own teacher. So uh, there was a lot of planning in that. Uh, and the breaks also, we, uh, we divided the breaks. A number of schools have had COVID cases, but four months on, the back-to-class plan in Denmark is seen as a success. In this phase of reopening, it's been left up to individual schools to design their own plan. Here, it really feels like pre-COVID times, and the headmaster says that's the point. With small pupils, there is a very little risk. I think they should take it easy and, and follow the rules, keep the distance, be aware of the hygiene and the pupils' hygiene, and then I think things will work. Denmark, a country of not even six million people, was able to avoid the mass outbreaks seen in other parts of Europe by going into lockdown early. Schools were ordered open before bars and restaurants. And because kids were back in class so quickly, countries around the world, including Canada, have been asking for advice. It's a good story about cooperation. The teachers' union collaborated with the government and says staff concerns were addressed early on. So their parents met uh, teachers who felt safe about this, telling them that we can cope with this situation. That also made parents feel safe. The evidence overall is that it's a pretty safe place to be. This virologist says it's more than planning that's preventing future outbreaks. Most of the evidence point to the fact that even if or even though children can become infected, they are not getting severely diseased and also they do not transmit the disease for reasons we don't know. Like much of the world, Denmark has a surge in cases right now, mostly among people in their 20s, so the government has reintroduced some restrictions. I think we have become too relaxed. And I, I think we might be uh, victim to our own success, uh, sort of, because we'd never experienced how bad this epidemic could be. That relaxed attitude on show, right at the school's gate. Danish parents take it all in stride and offer advice. Take a deep breath and, and let them go back. And uh, if something happens, you take their precautions and one class might be at home for a week again, but. Life needs to go on. For now, in Denmark, it does go on, which for the moment may make this country the envy of the world. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Copenhagen.